I saw myself as the weakest human being on the planet. And I wanted to transform that into the hardest man God ever created. Who's going to carry the boats? When you go to war with yourself, you find a lot of peace because you know exactly who you are. When you quit, your mind says we're done. So it doesn't expand. There's no expansion when you quit. Your mind takes control of you. You have to say, you, I run this motherfucker. You got to tell your brain where you want to go and how you want to go and how you want to get there. Stay fucking hard. That warrior mentality that I'm so proud of, I wasn't born with it. I was not always this strong guy, you see. I went through a lot of hard times in my life to get here today. What changed me was I had to be hard on myself. And I had to continue to grind myself into a fine dust. The only way I could find myself was to put myself through the worst thing possible. I was a scared, uneducated kid who stuttered, and I had to look at myself in the mirror and hold myself accountable for who I wasn't and who I wanted to be. Nothing was coming back to save me, so I realized I didn't save myself. You gain knowledge through suffering. And on the other end of suffering is a world that very few, very few have ever seen. It's a beautiful world because that's where you find yourself. You got to go into that hell hole of life that you have that f- you up and fix it. And that's what I'm here to do. It's a hard journey. It's a real journey. It's a journey that's going to take you way outside of being comfortable. We all look for toughness. We all want it, but we look for it in a comfortable environment. You will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. You have to do your best work when you're at least motivated. So those days you don't want to do it, guess what you got to do? You got to suck it the f*** up and do it. You have got to suffer to grow. To grow, you must suffer. The things I don't enjoy that I still do, that's where growth is at. Mm. And that's, for me, the only place growth is at Mm. is in that uncomfortable zone. So you want to be normal. So you just want to be like everybody else that roams the world, not knowing the power that's in them, being fine with being mediocre. You want to go back to who you were, huh, David? I'm like, that, man. Mm. I want my mind to know who's in charge. So for the better part of 26 years, my mind was in charge of me, which is why I made all these horrible decisions. Once you take control of your mind, you start making decisions for yourself versus your mind making decisions for you. So basically, a lot of us aren't prepared for life. We get up willy nilly and this hope life is going to happen. It is going to happen, but it's going to happen with a prepared mind or an unprepared mind. Most people attack life with an unprepared mind. What I do is I try to account for all things that could happen, might happen, probably will happen, and then the unknowns. So basically, I can't account for everything, but I do know there could be some things that come up in life that you need to be ready for. I know for a fact I'm not going to want to work out tomorrow. Therefore, I'm preparing my mind for that. Mm. I don't want to do that. I know tomorrow will come with some difficult decisions to make. It may come with getting a phone call saying someone died. This happened. That happened. I'm always preparing myself, not in a morbid way, but just like, look, man, be ready for life. Mm. Don't let life just start attacking you left and right. Make sure that you start to build a mental armor. So then you're ready for life. And that comes with a very physical way. And the physical helps out to mental. I realized at a young age how to change myself was through discipline. And the military didn't teach me that. It was something I realized I had zero discipline, zero self-discipline. And I realized I have to start developing this. And I started really because I was horrible at reading and I was horrible at writing. I have so many learning disabilities, it's not even funny. So I just sit down at the table and spend so much time in this reading and writing and, and learning. And that kind of translated over to my self-discipline with, with uh, working out. So that's where it started. I started when I was about 16 years old and said, well, I'm a fourth grade reading level. You know, let me go ahead now and start really uh focusing because I'm not going to get in the military because I got to pass the test. Yeah. So that's where it started for me. Mm-hmm. It's more important to, to own your weaknesses. You got to really triple down on those, man. 
Because why? You want to become a full human being. We like to run away from weaknesses. Like, for instance, if you're good at running, all you want to do is run. Mm. If you're great at reading, you have several books. But we don't do those things that we're not good at. So for me, I realized, man, like, I keep on running away from these things I'm not good at. I have to dive into these things. I have to become one with these things. And that's what happened. And so I, I, I own them both. Yeah. And I talk very openly about them both. I see a whole bunch of people walking around out here who have no idea how talented they truly are. Now I'm going to talk about talent, like some God-given ability. Talent that sometimes you have to hone and you have to work on mm. and you have to harness yourself. And they just walk around just on their phones, just clueless to how powerful they are. The biggest thing you have to do is shut off technology. You have to go dark. And what I mean by that is you have to be quiet in your mind. Get away from people. We love being around people. We love talking. We love, we love parties. We love all that. It's okay to be alone. It's also okay to be unhappy. It's okay to be unhappy sometimes, man. It's okay to say, you know what, man? I'm up. So you gotta go to the truth first. Who are you? you get really accountable. And say, okay, who am I? What's the truth about me? Get to that dark place in your mind. Figure out, it may take months, it may take years. Figure out your purpose. Figure out what you want to be in life. And then from there, okay, I have my purpose. It may take a long time. No one knows their purpose because it's too loud. Find your purpose. From there, all right, you got to start planning. People love the planning phase because it's very comfortable. Mm. And then from the planning phase, you got to go to execution. So the execution phase where we all hate because that's where the real work begins. And that's when the failure happens and the failure and the failure. So, but, you know, that's, that, that's kind of how you have to do it. Because every day is a battle. Every day is a battle because your mind wants to choose the path of least resistance. Every day. But you don't become better by, by ever doing that. Mm. You become normal. And I don't want to be normal. Mm. So... It may not be a life for everybody, but I find a lot of peace in not being normal in my life. So if you could define happiness for you, what would that be? It's overcoming yourself at all costs, whatever that takes. Mm. To be at the point of your life where you don't care about being judged. You can be in a room of a million people and they all hate you. And you walk in and you go like this. Because not because you're angry at them, because you know yourself inside and out and you know that you've put yourself to hell to be where you're at today mm. you've walked the walk you've talked the talk and you've walked the walk and that's to me what it's all about mm. it's all about putting those boots on the ground and getting after it every day and once you do that you have a feeling about yourself that no one can ever take away or even understand life is always giving you a test trying to give you a way out trying to give you an excuse not to show up you got to have the mentality to show up every day of your life. No matter what life throws at you, it's our responsibility to show up to the caliphate of life. Life beat me the f up bad. Mm. It, I mean, I was uh, knocked out in the 12th round of a, of a 15 round, you know, heavyweight bout. I was knocked out. But what happened was in the 12th round, when the challenger turned his back on me, I was getting up. And I got up and won the next three rounds and knocked that motherfucker out in the 15th round. So that's my mind about can't hurt me. I was hurt, man. Like, literally, I had to overcome so much those first 26 years of my life. And I still do every day today. You know, it's not over. But the mentality of can't hurt me is just that. No matter what's in front of you, man, you have to face, you have to confront. You have to overcome and move forward. Mm. So my father, you know, some of the kids that bullied me, my learning disabilities, all these things I went through in life, stuttering, you know, has so many different issues, failing and failing and failing at overcome them. Or they would have overcame mm. me. I was able to look at my childhood and how I grew up as the ultimate training ground for my life. Someone, there has to be some people in this planet Earth who have my mentality. Mm. As gross as it is to some people, and as far off as it is and not understood, there has to be some people like me on this planet Earth. Has to be some warriors out there that are able to take this mindset and do something with it. 
So that right there, once you are able to look at your life and realize that all these bad things are actually the ultimate training ground for what you're going to you know, encounter in life, you start looking at your past very differently. I'm still examining human potential. How far can the mind go? How far can we go as human beings? But it's amazing that once you get control of that thing, how far you can go. At the end of the day, I asked myself one question. Can I take one more step? And usually the answer is yes. So if you can answer that question and not take another step, that is real failure. That is real quitting. So a lot of people can take one more step, but they choose not to. I don't know if you can take two steps. You got to answer that question after you take the first step. But I can always take one more step. So if I choose not to, that's on me. And I got to live with that. Most people think I'm just some grand animal who runs and yells and just says in mother all the time. And that's nowhere near the truth. That's maybe what they see in a one minute video. And that's what we believe. But there's a lot of thought behind a person being a born loser, becoming who I am today. You don't just wake up and just rocky. Just, you got to wake up and think about, you know, there's a process to getting better. For me, like I built Goggins from the ground up. I was born David Goggins. David Goggins wasn't good enough. He was a scared, bullied, abused kid. That kid, whenever something got tough, no matter how hard I trained, no matter how ready I was, whenever something got tough for me, David Goggins, the real David Goggins would come out and he would quit. So I realized this over a period of time. So I had to build Goggins. And in that process, I have to go back to that mental lab. And that mental lab is that scratch. That mental lab isn't that trained humility. And so that's where I get better. I get better when I'm digging holes in the ground, when I'm waking up early knowing I don't have to do these things. That's where I get better. What do you think most people get wrong about motivation? They think it's a permanent fix. They think it's something that, that is a constant. They think that maybe once I get it, I'm going to hold on to it. Nothing is permanent. Nothing is permanent. And a lot of times you have to learn to perform without motivation. You have to learn to perform without purpose. You have to learn to perform a lot of different things. And that's what people think. They think I need to have this motivation to work out, to study, to be better. So if they don't have it, they just don't do it. And that's where you fail. You have to learn to train your mind well beyond motivation. If you have motivation, that's great. That's some kindling to the fire. All it takes is a little bit of spark. You can burn a whole forest up. But motivation, you have to learn to exist without it. You have to be your best self when you're least motivated. And that's the tricky part about all that. Motivation is just a word. You have to have these different things in your mind on where you want to go and know that motivation is not going to get me there because I'm not going to always be motivated. Learn to pick yourself up on your own. You got to be your own coach. I'm trying to build people up. I'm trying to armor their mind. I'm trying to get them the belief because this world we live in is tough. It's tough. It will beat you down. The world and the life that we live in is the ultimate competitor. It will find your weakness and it will just hammer you. So if I can help you build belief, build confidence to the point where nothing can hurt you because you know exactly who you are. Being ashamed is one of the biggest things that kill people nowadays in their minds, kill them from moving forward. I'm ashamed of myself. Don't ever be ashamed of 